Hello. Welcome, everybody, to the 22, 20, excuse me, 2022 St. Paul String Quartet competition. And uh, this is the very first senior division round, uh, something we've been thinking about for many years, and it's finally come to fruition. And I'm delighted to uh, present it today with my colleagues, the Artaria String Quartet, and with the help of the wonderful Catalyst String Quartet as our jury. So uh, thank you, Catalyst, for being here today. Um, we also have, uh, fortunately for you guys, I'm not your MC. Um, we have a professional MC person coming on right now, and I would like to, uh, before I do that, I want to read something, excuse me. Dear friends of chamber music, hope, perseverance, solutions. As citizens of the world, we must seek creative and equi equitable solutions to the very real problems we read about and experience every day. Music is the perfect medium for mindful thinking and creativity. Today, we live in a fearful world in need of hope. Music and the young people that play it are our, our salvation in these challenging times. I wrote that a few weeks ago, and if you read the news today, we, we need it ever more, uh, even than that. So uh, our hearts go out to uh, people that are suffering in the world, and we all know that music, especially the people in the audience here and online, uh, how beautiful Music, what music can do for our souls and our personal well-being. So, would you please welcome my friend and uh, public radio host, Allison Young, to the stage. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for those comments, Ray. I, I do want to tell a little secret that uh, yesterday evening, um, I was actually hosting the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra, and I gave a real quick call to Ray to just a job, double check about this morning, and I said, well, you know, we're going online at 11 o'clock, and he said, yeah, live at Sundon Hall, and I thought, oh, yeah, the pandemic is really kind of on the wane now. So I just want to sort of acknowledge the fact of how excited I am to be here live with performers and with all of you here again. This is just a really um, wonderful gift for all of us. The mission of the St. Paul String Quartet competition is to celebrate excellence in string quartet playing, foster an increased appreciation for the chamber music art form, and enhance the music culture in this country. Initially, it was open to outstanding high school groups only, and since its inception in 2006, it's seen these young stars go on to bright careers as members of internationally renowned ensembles, including the Calador Quartet. So very, very exciting place, a springboard for them. This is the first year of a college-level competition open to ages 30 and younger. So you are gonna hear very, very high-level um, Professional, on the edge of professional for sure, uh, string quartets with a lot of polish. Uh, for those of you who are new to this competition, there are two rounds. Um, there was a selection jury for uh, videos to choose the four finalists today. Uh, those members included violinist Mark Steinberg from the Brentano String Quartet, Julie Rosenfeld, violinist of the Colorado Quartet, Masumi Rostad, vi violist of the Pacifica Quartet, and Yi Sun Kim, cellist in the Borromeo Quartet, all professional musicians um, who chose these uh, players today. And we have amazingly good news. Sitting behind you is the Catalyst Quartet, uh, the judges today. Thanks so much for, for coming. They'll be performing uh, tomorrow as part of the Music in the Park series for the Schubert Club, but I understand the concert is sold out. So good news for them, good news for the Schubert Club, and really good news for us to have such fine musicians. I'll tell you more about them and you'll hear from them later as uh, the competition goes on. And you also have an opportunity to be a part of the competition, a judge yourself. We have two uh, audience choices for uh, best performer of the BIPOC piece and um, best string quartet overall, sort of an audience favorite. And you can vote at uh, SPSQC, that's the St. Paul String Quartet competition, SPSQC.org. There's a poll and I believe it starts, it doesn't open right away. It's after at the end of this round, so you can, you can vote for your favorite, and uh, they do win a prize for that, so do check it out. 
Diversity and inclusion are now at the forefront of the mission of the St. Paul Ch uh, String Quartet competition. So there is a required piece um, that everyone plays, women, well, a piece by a woman composer or composers of color. And the piece that was chosen today is by a composer named Zhou Tian. He is the first Chinese-born composer uh, nominated for a Grammy for Best Contemporary Classical Composition. He's an associate professor of composition at Michigan State University College of Music. And he's from Hangzhou um, and says that he seeks inspiration from different cultures and strives to mix them seamlessly into a musically satisfying combination for performers and audience alike. And uh, like two of our quartets that you'll hear today, uh, Zhou Tian was trained at Juilliard and Curtis. He speaks about this quartet in particular, and it seems to be very appropriate for young players. He wrote it before he came to the United States when he was only 18 years old. And he says, the work captures my state of mind of creating music as a young person. Composing anything at all was exhilarating, and inspiration seemed coming from everywhere. I wanted to embed my love of music from the past and present. Bach, Ravel, Prokofiev, Chick Corea. So he combines everybody. He combines them into a fusion of my own taste, he says. The piece consists of three movements, and it begins with a bright and lively allegro. The presto is the required work today, and we start with a group from University of Texas, Austin, the Yensu Quartet. Thank you.
beautifully played. It's going to be fun to hear that four times, I think. Um, there was the Yansu Quartet from the University of Texas in Austin, and Ray has his finger raised. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah. So uh, just a few notes about uh, this uh, competition. If you're listening online, watching online, you can find out more about the ensembles uh, by doing two things. You can uh, look at the program. We have a PDF copy of the program, uh, of full bios and the pieces that they're playing and uh, more about each individual musician. Um, as well, you can watch a video that uh, Ray conducted interviewing them and asking all kinds of um, kind of probing questions about how they rehearse, how they came together and stuff like that and some behind the scenes stories. It's all at the website spsqc.org. Um, the Yansu Quartet uh, was Ellie Seavers, Josh Liu, Casey Boyer and Hudson Schill, performers from the University of Texas in Austin. And I will have more about uh, about them and about their performances uh, coming up in a little bit. In the finals, they're playing music by Shostakovich and Beethoven. It'd be really quite exciting hearing those two together. Do you want me to continue or do you want need a little more time? It's funny how you get so swept up in the music, you just wanted to keep going, but this is a competition and the Catalyst Quartet is uh, writing lots of notes and that's really what's important about these kinds of um, judged competitions. It's not that you just say, you're the winner, you're second place, but that you get really some constructive um, information to take with you as these kids go on to become, I call them kids because they're young enough to be my children, um, as these young professionals go on to create their own quartets. They need the kinds, of, um, the kinds of notes that help them improve their musicality, but also just kind of the ensemble things and, and, and good uh, uh, information and advice to take on. So we're going to be taking just short breaks after each performance to give the Catalyst some time to write notes. We go on now to uh, the Hoyta Quartet. They're from St. Olaf College. Grace Alexander and Owen Cromwell are the violinists. Louis Dory is viola and Henry Payton, cellist. Let's welcome the Hoyta Quartet.
Definitely had the hometown crowd here today. Glad to see so many of you uh, from Northfield and from the environs coming to share in this competition today. Um, really one of the exciting things about hearing this same piece, I mean, how many of you are familiar with this piece, have ever heard it before today? Few hands go up, very few. I'm a flute player, I've never heard it before, and it's so exciting to hear four different interpretations. So really an exciting thing to continue with the same work and with different kinds of, of uh, qualities of, of, um, of interpretation. We'll continue with a group called the Latimer Quartet from the Curtis Institute of Music. Oh, and I did want to mention that Hoyt is going to be playing Mendelssohn and Bartok in the final, so do stay around for that. Latimer Quartet is made up of Danny Jin, Haram Kim violins, uh, Chita Chen Viola and Sai Sai Ding Cello. Let's welcome to the stage the Latimer Quartet. Thank you. 
right, one more string quartet in this uh, final round of the St. Paul String Quartet competition to hear. Just a couple of reminders that uh, you will be able to vote for your favorite performance of this particular piece, this BIPOC piece uh, by um, Zhou, Zhou Tian. Um, you can do that by going to spsqc.org. I believe uh, Ray, it opens after they finish playing, so that'll open up to vote. A uh, prize will be awarded for the best performance of this particular piece. Um, you can also, on the website, when we take a break, you can watch a short video of each performer and find out a little bit more about them. You can uh, check out the program as well if you're listening online and not in the hall right now. And on the, uh, while you're on the website, there's also a donate button um, that you can uh, donate any amount to support this competition. Ray told me yesterday that the uh, prize money is increasing, which is really great for the, for the young people because, uh, because it is very expensive to get coaching and very expensive to uh, pursue this career. So we do want to see the string quartet competition continue and donations at any amount really make a big difference. Um, a tax deductible donation can be made at spsqc.org. If you can't understand what I'm saying, it's spsqc.org. Um, so one more quartet. It's the Marion String Quartet from the Juilliard School. Emma Richmond and Sahana Shravan, Cameron Ane Williams and Wang Shu Xia um, playing the final group in this uh, final round. Let's welcome the Marion String Quartet.
Isn't this absolutely thrilling? Am I the only one who's just smiling through the whole thing? <laughs> absolutely exciting performances by all four of these ensembles in the finals. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention, Ray came down to tell me that uh, some of you are having trouble with the poll, and um, who knows, it's a technical glitch. What you need to do is go back to the main page of spsqc.org and just you know refresh it. And, it should work now, We've, we're making it work. So um, just to, to get the polls, because we do want to um, hear your vote for the best performer of that piece, the best interpretation that you enjoyed today. It's gonna be a hard decision. Apparently the donation button is working perfectly fine, so if you wanna make a donation, <laughs> you can do that as well, spsqc.org. We're gonna take a break now. I actually don't even know what time it is, but we're taking a break till 12.30 for, for lunch and um, for everyone to take a, a pause, and then we'll come back with the finals. Really exciting music on this. We've got Shostakovich and Bartok and um, Fanny Mendelssohn, or Fanny, H Fanny Hensel, she's, she's known, so we'll have a female composer as well. Really exciting stuff, and hope to see you in a little bit. Thanks.
right, welcome back to the second half of the St. Paul String Quartet competition. It is so great to be with you here live today. And for those of you who are joining us online for, um, for the final, final round, um, I just want to remind you that the mission of the St. Paul String Quartet is to celebrate excellence in string quartet playing, foster an increased appreciation for the chamber music art form, and enhance the music culture in this country. And this is the first year that we have um, not just outstanding high school groups, but professional groups up to the age of 30. So really exciting to hear these young performers who sound like absolute professionals. I did make a small error, and I do apologize. I spoke about voting. Uh, the voting is a one-time vote for your favorite audience favorite uh, for the competition. And so uh, when you go online, you vote for your, for your favorite, and they will be uh, given an award for audience favorite. You can follow along on the program. If you are listening online right now, you can just go to the website and look at the program. Ray Shows uh, writes about this competition, he writes about this time too, and he says that hope, perseverance, and solutions are what we're looking for right now in our lives. Music is the answer to violence, to division, to chaos. And young people making music gives us that bright light of hope for a better tomorrow. So it's really an exciting day to share it with you. You can hear the musicians now and after the program or during the judging, you can watch short videos and find out a little bit more about them. But I'm going to share some of the things I have learned about these wonderful quartets too because some of the behind the scenes things are the most interesting. The Yensu Quartet is from the University of Texas, Austin and they only formed this past August. And I find this quite interesting that they uh, formed to uh, read music and, um, and then became an ensemble together um, to go on to competitions and uh, be a much more polished, more professional. They have a resident composer and violinist, Josh Liu, um, who brings out an experimental flavor to their work, a willingness to try new things. And in the interview, Ellie mentions that the rehearsals go very long because they always have something more to say to each other. You can probably tell when they play that they're really good friends. They begin with the Shostakovich uh, number eight, the first and second movements. Um, it's written in this Shostakovich quartet in memory of victims of fascism and war, but more likely that was a hidden reason for the music. It was more about Stalin, uh, Shostakovich's own struggles with Stalin because he wrote it in three days at a time when he'd given in and joined the Communist Party. It's very strong music. It's followed by Beethoven's Opus 95, the second through fourth movements. It's uh, subtitled Serioso. And this is something that Beethoven wrote. If I had not read somewhere that no one should quit life voluntarily while he could still do something worthwhile, I would have been dead long ago, and certainly by my own hand. Life is so beautiful, but for me, it is poisoned forever. Definitely not a good moment in Beethoven's life, a failed love affair, he was broke, he was going deaf, and yet he wrote this, this angst-ridden music that expresses his life. And we'll hear it played now by Ellie Seavers and Josh Liu violins, Casey Boyer viola and Hudson Schill cello, the Yansu Quartet.
It was really something. The Yansu Quartet loves the Sirioso Quartet so much that they actually named themselves that. Yansu means serious in Chinese. And they'd like to make a shout out to John Largess and Brian Lewis. Thanks. <laughs> uh, also, hoida is, is next. It, um, it means something. It's a word. It means hill in Norwegian. Now, if any of you have ever spent any time at St. Olaf College, you know that it's affectionately called the Hill, and um, students talk about meeting on the Hill. The Hoyda Quartet came together uh, to read for fun. They all have different majors, including computer science and economics, but magic happened when they came together, and they decided in January to buckle down and enter competitions and work harder. They actually got coaching, not just from um, string players at St. Olaf, but they said to us that uh, the entire faculty got on board. So they have coaching from wind players and pianists and singers and everybody. So a lot of um, forces coming together to make their program quite beautiful today. It's a contrast in romantic beauty and jagged unexpectedness. It begins with Mendelssohn String Quartet in F minor, movement four. This was composed um, during the final months of Mendelssohn's life, and he described his mood to a friend as gray on gray. 
It was his most dark and barren work and inspired by the death of his beloved sister, Fanny. You'll hear a piece by her later in the program, by the way. Uh, and then the second piece they play is Bartok String Quartet Number no. 2, Movements 1 and 2. And this comes from a time when Bartok was traveling the countryside of Hungary and the surrounding areas to collect and catalog folk songs and even recording them, which was really, when you consider how difficult that was at the time, at the early part of the, uh, um, in the 1900s, carrying around this very heavy stuff, and he was a very small and sickly person. He went everywhere, went to Transylvania, to Bulgaria, even North Africa. Not just tunes that he collected, but new scales and new harmonies, and he created a unique avant-garde. Grace Alexander and Owen Cromwell are the violins. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. You have a question? Oh, okay, a little bit of trouble with audio, so we're gonna take just a quick pause to check on that. Please be patient. We'll be back. So we'll give a warm welcome to Grace Alexander and Owen Cromo violins, Louis Dory Viola and Henry Payton cello, the Hoida Quartet.
So we are going to get started again, and we do apologize to folks at home that the last quartet, um, we did have a looping problem, so it was uh, difficult to hear that spectacular performance of the Bartok uh, String Quartet number two. Um, such beautiful playing. The Hoida wants to send a shout out and a thank you to Charles Gray. Thank you, Charles. Um, I do want to share this one little story with you that's so cute. Grace from the Hoida told me um, a really heartwarming story that her pianist for her recital, her you know, her degree recital, had to suddenly drop out at the last minute, and she still wanted to give her recital. So, Lewis, um, who is the uh, composing um, major in the ensemble, arranged the Stravinsky Duo Concertante for violin with string trio as accompaniment, and they performed it. I mean, talk about a wonderful bonding moment. Such a great story. Again, you can hear more of the stories. Uh, about the string quartets on the website, sp, oh, spsqc.org. Yeah, and there's videos. And as well, um, that's where you vote and, um, and donate to um, the string quartet competition so that we can continue this wonderful competition and give bigger prizes. Yeah. Oh, the jury's not quite ready. I can vamp. I can vamp. Um, the Latimer Quartet is next. They're from Curtis. And um, they're perhaps, of these four groups, the last group to come together and, and form as an ensemble. They formed on February 28th. So uh, really, really pushing it there. Um, they took their name that relates to a place. If any of you have been to Philadelphia, lived in Philadelphia, been to Curtis, um, Latimer is a street and it's a store. So anyone in Philly really knows this, this place in particular. Um, one of the challenges that they told us they faced was learning music as an ensemble, um, which I find kind of interesting. You know, they practice so much on their own and are learning concertos possibly or uh, solos with piano. Um, so they really had to start from the basics. They said, get the metronome out and did a lot of sight reading as an ensemble. And it really shows in their, in their sense of cohesiveness. First uh, piece that they'll be playing is by Haydn. It's the first movement of the Lark Quartet, and it comes from Opus 64. And these are a really interesting opus for Haydn, who's considered the father of the quartet, because he wrote them when he was at the palace in Esterhazy. And it's characterized by a very specific kind of sound he was looking for, which was true chamber music, true music for a salon. So there's a kind of intimacy and nuance that quite, is quite different from his later quartets, which are grander, which would have been performed on a concert stage. Um, in the Lark, we hear a sweetness in that true chamber music sound from the string quartet itself, which he all but invented. Um, more Mendelssohn in this uh, particular set, the string quartet in E minor, and it comes from a completely different time from the Mendelssohn you heard previously, from Mendelssohn's life when he was in his 20s. He was busy, he was successful, and he was famous. Um, he wrote this one on his honeymoon, <laughs> which I wonder what that honeymoon was like, and it's filled with virtuosity and romantic passion. So welcoming uh, Danny Yahoon and Haram Kim, Chia Ta Chen and Sai Sai Ding, the Latimer Quartet.
We're coming to the end of the competition, and it's getting very exciting. Um, the Latimer Quartet wanted a shout out to the Latimer Street Deli. <laughs> Yay! Hi, Deli. <laughs> Um, they do have something really interesting. Um, if you watch their, their video, it cracked me up and I had to ask them more about this. They have little rules for the rehearsal. So if you've ever played in a string quartet, if somebody's late or somebody forgets their music, I mean, you basically can't do anything in the, in the rehearsal because you need all four of you. So their rule is if someone is late or forgets their music at a, a quartet rehearsal, um, they have to buy coffee for everyone. If they don't bring a, bring a pencil to rehearsal, they have to buy beer for everyone. <laughs> and if they're late for a coaching se session, they have to buy dinner for everyone. <laughs> so good rules. I don't know if Catalyst is getting some ideas here um, <laughs> for their next door, the Artaria. Um, so <laughs> um, again, uh, the St. Paul Chamber, uh, St. Paul String Quartet competition awards over $9,000 in prize money for both the junior and senior division. And um, if you want to help continue this competition, help up the prize money, um, do donate. Go to our website and uh, hit the donate button and uh, help support these kids. Every gift makes a difference. Up next is the Marion String Quartet from the Juilliard School. Four very strong women naming their group after Marion Anderson, the civil rights leader who literally used her voice for change. Um, Emma shared with us that in rehearsal, they've all grown very thick skins. I don't know if you guys are musicians and rehearse with other people. Sometimes you've got to tell someone, you're a little flat there, and you've got to have a thick skin for that. She says that um, they really enjoy each other. They don't waste time mincing words. Um, they're all open to improving. And there's lots of laughter, too, and lots of tears. But real, real growth in this group as musicians and people as well. They're playing music of Haydn, um, but a very different time for Haydn. The early uh, Lar Quartet was early in his career. This is later from the last set of quartets, uh, the Sunrise Quartet, the first and second movements. Such a novel idea at the time to have all instruments as equals. It's, it's, it's uh, easy to forget that the string quartet was a completely new thing at the time of Haydn. And uh, this showcases all of Haydn's whimsy and joy in creating imagery in music. And they're playing a piece by a female composer, Fanny Hensel, uh, Fanny Mendelssohn Hensel, the first, second, and fourth movements of her only string quartet. She doubted herself quite a bit, as everyone did at the time, except her brother, who always turned to her um, for ideas and to play things for her. Um, she writes this about her quartet. Where did the ideas come from? She says, I'm not an eccentric or overly sentimental person. But she did realize that all of that came from encountering the exceedingly moving and emotional style of Beethoven when she was a child. The Marion Quartet is proud to include this work on their program. They say they want to contrast the piece that's often relegated to special concerts just for female composers with the creator of the string quartet himself, Haydn. So let's welcome to the stage Emma Richman and Sahana Shravan, violins, Cameron Ane Williams, viola, and Wang Shun Xia, the Marion String Quartet.
shall all gather. I have the envelopes. <laughs> shall I just begin speaking? I do, I do want to thank all of you for coming, um, for, for tuning in on uh, the video stream, the live stream. I know we've had a few problems, but we do appreciate everyone coming. And for you in the audience to be here as well. It's, isn't it great to be live in a concert and you forget that like, they're human beings <laughs> performing? Thank you. <laughs> It was truly my pleasure to share this, this moment with you and hear these exciting young uh, people. I do want to thank um, our supporters, uh, the Schubert Club, McPhail Center for Music, Michael and Jean Antonello, Claire Givens Violins, John Waddle Violins, Karen and David Grandstrand, Tom Peterson, James and Perry Legere, Annie H. Hellmeyer Foundation and the Artaria String Quartet. And thanks to all of you who made donations and uh, continue to support this uh, great competition. Let's give a round of applause for our supporters. You saw a lot of activity happening up here. Uh, there was members of the Artaria Quartet. They were our volunteers. And um, a big thanks to Hamlin University and Sundon Recital Hall and to Sylvester Visick for uh, making this possible for us for this beautiful concert hall. Thanks so much. So our um, judges for the final round, the Grammy Award winning Catalyst Quartet, they have been scoring each performance with detailed written comments in the following categories, tone, quality, intonation, ensemble and balance, and musical ideas. Um, if you don't know the Catalyst Quartet, they are a great quartet to get to know, Grammy-winning group, and um, they have, uh, have, a, have a very important mission. They were formed uh, in 2010 as part um, the, of the Sphinx Ensemble. Their mission is to, uh, that they believe in the unity that can be achieved through music and redefining and reimagining the classical music experience. And one way that they're doing that, uh, their current project now is it's a huge project. They're performing and recording in a, a, a project called Uncovered, uh, a complete anthology of chamber works by important black composers who are doing really great things. And finally here in person, their concerts had to be canceled because of COVID over two years. And uh, finally here, and I just went ahead and refreshed the Schubert Club concert and it is completely sold out tomorrow. But uh, hopefully you can hear them online. Um, it's Carla Donahue Perez and Abby Fayette Violin, Paul Araya Viola and Carlos Rodriguez Cello. Let's welcome the Catalyst Quartet. Yay. Line up for your picture. <laughs> so the time has come. We'll start with the audience prize. Uh, Let's so, sing all the quartets on first. I'm oh, the quartets. I apologize. My goodness. Yeah, we have to find. Yes, yeah, that's right. We're do Nancy, this you. Okay, so, uh, I will bring the quartets. Order. Do, you the Pro do I remember the program order? Again, let's welcome uh, Ellie Sievers and Josh Lou Violins, Casey Boyer Viola, Hudson Schill Cello, the Yansu Quartet. <laughs> Feel like the Von Trapp family singers. <laughs> From St. Olaf College, Grace Alexander and Owen Cromwell Violins, uh, Louis Dory, Viola, and Henry Payton cello, the Hoida Quartet. <laughs> From the Curtis Institute, Danny Jin and Haram Kim violins, Chi Ta Chen Viola, and Sai Sai Ding cello, the Latimer Quartet. Finally, from the Juilliard School, Emma Richmond and Sahana Shravan, Cam uh, Cameron Ene Williams Viola, and Wangshu Xia Cello, the Marion String Quartet.
<laughs> oh, it's so cute. That's one of the cool things of this. You make friends, you meet people, you learn stuff. Okay, so now you're on. Now I'm on. How are you doing this? How are you doing this? Okay. So as, if I, as I call you, please stand and accept your certificate. We'll start with audience prize. Uh, it is a tie with the Yansu Quartet and the Hoida Quartet. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. If you can remember to earlier this morning, I'm looking at my notes to remember, it was the first string quartet written as a, a juvenile piece by Zhou Tian, um, and that was the BIPOC uh, work. Everyone played the same piece, the same first movement, all with different styles and different interpretations. It was really exciting to hear them one after another. The winner of the BIPOC award is the Latimer Quartet. In the final round, we have two prizes, beginning with the silver medalists. Don't sit down, guys. The Latimer Quartet. I mean, I hate to say the cliche that everyone's a winner, but I think we would all agree that this was an exciting day, an exciting performance of every single piece. And many of us heard, including me, probably every piece nearly, um, new, new music and got um, inspired by it, inspired by these young people for their dedication and hard work. But uh, one group was chosen as gold medalists, and that was the Marion String Quartet. <laughs> should make the closing remarks, but uh, I'll let you write because you're, you'll be coming back next year, I think. I hope more. so. I hope so. I mean, maybe you too. I would like to have a round of applause for Allison Young for the work she did today. Quartets, really all winners today. Please make sure that you shake hands with the Catalyst Quartet or at least acknowledge them today before you leave and maybe get a picture or something. And I would love a picture with each of the groups too before you leave. And audience, thank you very much for being here and supporting these young people. Audience online, um, goes without saying, we had over 1,700 votes today. And I think there's a lot of interest in what these young people are doing and the hard work that they put together on this. And that's why we put in the work to make this event happen each year. And it does not happen without uh, sponsorship. So besides the major sponsors, I please, if you have corporations or companies that can match what you're doing, we need all the help we can get to raise the funds each year because these guys deserve it. Thank you very much.
And then the back row, you guys are going to stay standing. So you come in and fill these gaps right here. Yeah, yeah, no chair back there. You're all good. Good, 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 good. Perfect. Yep, we got to get our signs out. Countless, we can get around these guys after he takes a picture. Hold ah, on. okay.